In my opinion, one of the most important things for instructional designers to have is a diverse and well-built out toolbox of tools that you can use within your designs. While all instructional design is different, depending on if you're in the corporate world or in the educational sector, at the end of the day, you are creating learning experiences. So knowing what tools are available for you to use and design with and what approaches are possible with our current technology is super important to be efficient and effective instructional designer. So welcome to my toolbox. In this series, I'm going to take you behind the scenes and show you some of my most trusted platforms, applications, and processes that I use every single day in my instructional design practice. My name is Dr. John Pauls, and I'm here to share some of my best practices, tips, and tricks that I use every single day as an instructional designer and professional learning consultant. Before we dive in, make sure you like and subscribe so you won't miss out as I post new videos and tutorials. Also, make sure to check out my website and ePortfolio at www.drjohnpauls.com for more information about my services. I am available for consulting, instructional design, and grant development opportunities, so make sure to connect if you would like to know more. Now, let's dive into my toolbox. Welcome back to part two of this series. And uh, this next tool that we're going to discuss is one that is really going to help ins aspiring instructional designers, uh, especially when building your portfolio. And I'm going to explain why it's so beneficial um, in just a second. So the tool, let's pull it up, is known as Genially. So just go to your web browser and type in G-E-N-I-A-L dot L-Y, and it'll take you to the platform. Now, there is cost associated with that I do I but you can do it um, do some things on the free plan and even the cost associated is very very minimal compared to other platforms when you're building interactives um, and so what genially is is essentially a place where you can create interactive content um, and so when I talk about use the term interactives um, I think of the sort of click through experience gamification um, interactive students are, or learners are going to be clicking on the content on the screen to learn. Now, traditionally, that would be created in, in things like Articulate 360. That's sort of known as the industry standard. But there are other ways to create those interactives, such as iSpring. I have a video on my uh, channel. Check that out. Um, and even that, though, it is it is a little expensive. Um, and so if you don't have the budget for that, but you still want to make SCORM activities, activities that can be uploaded into a learning management system and display results, um, and you want to demonstrate your ability to design these interactive genially is for you genially is for you okay so I, here I am on the website and I do pay for the premium version again it is not it's not that much um, because I wouldn't be paying for it if it was a lot <laughs> so here you can see um, if we go to creations this is my area this is these are things that I have created so far using genially now I will show you um, one thing I really love is you can create interactive guides. And so this is an example of an interactive guide that I created for faculty as a support about using technology um, on our campus. So right here, you see it looks very much sort of like a presentation, a slide deck templates. Um, every single slide has its own information, and then it's all linked together using this main index. But again, this is shareable via a URL. And so when I look at it, and we launch it and it becomes active, it becomes just like any other interactive learning experience. And so I'm clicking through and I see all of my options and I can go to each individual option and the next and get more information. I can go back home. So you can see it's very, very, you know, it, it works. It's nice. It's a nice way to get interactive content to your consumers. This is perfect for creating tutorials. A lot of industries, Corporate America are going to need training resources, tutorials, training guides. And so keeping this in mind with what's possible um, is really beneficial. Now, this is an example right here. This is a template that I used um, to make just I really didn't actually implement this. I was exploring uh, my goal was to use this as an instructional support document for 
all of the different technologies that we support in our department. And so what I loved about this was obviously the theming it has nothing to do with the, the content, but I just, I'm a sucker for nostalgia. So this was wonderful. And so I didn't really have to change anything. You can see it's all built um, very much slide based. Um, and so I went in and I changed the options. And then when we play it, we will see exactly what it looks like. You gotta love the background music, right? So press start. There's an introduction. You can choose characters. We're gonna go straight our four different missions. A space mission, where you answer a series of five questions. There are consequences if you do not do well. <laughs> so that, that process goes throughout. And then the final mission, um, they had to put in the numbers to get the password. So kind of fun, kind of fun. That's getting annoying. Um, and so it was just the ease of use with this, the ability um, to export it as a SCORM file into your learning management system. That's what's great. Um, you can also do things like create interactive study materials. Um, this is an interactive study guide for the eukaryotic cell. I don't know how to say that. Um, but this is, we literally just built this for a course in microbiology. So this is another example labeled graphics. It's a, it's a nice option to have. Now this is, oh, this is something that I created in the month of December. Um, we were having a monthly meeting with professional learning specialists that I'm a part of. And so I was asked to do a little asynchronous breakout room session. Um, and so I use Genially, I'm turning that off real quick. I use Genially because they all had access to Genially. It was not cost prohibitive. It was something they could easily implement in their practices. And so I took a template, which was this holiday escape room template, and I created an interactive experience tailored to our needs. So the first section was some frequently asked, like some trivia about our organization. The second section was some trivia questions on some commonly used ed tech tools. This one was really fun. It was a seek and find where I actually made videos in Canva um, with these ornate sort of holiday backgrounds. And I like entered the frame of the video and I said, okay, study the following image. I'm going to ask you a question about it. And so they looked at this image and then I asked them a question about like how many gingerbread were in the scene or it was kind of like those old seek and find books that we had. Super cute. And then use your egg noggin, which is just some like, I think it was math problems or something. And then at the end, when they completed all, you get a final gift and you could decorate a holiday tree. Um, and so if you've got it wrong, so very much the interactive elements that we use in some of our designs, except I can come in and do it a lot easier, a lot quicker, and it's a lot cheaper than some of the alternatives. So um, definitely check Genially out for your instructional design needs, if appropriate. So that is Genially. In part one of this series, I introduce you to Canva and all of the different designs and content you create in that platform. In this part of the series, I showed you Genially. These are two platforms that can get you up and running designing your own instructional design portfolio with little to minimal cost. These are perfect options for anybody getting started in the industry trying to build that portfolio or for anybody who wants to use these products to create interactive elements or content for your own courses or designs. Now, as we continue to build on our instructional design toolbox throughout this series, you're going to see I pick different platforms based on my learner's needs. That's part of my analysis. So when it comes to Genially, I use it typically interactive, um, the interactive images where you can click and get the hotspot. It is much easier to create that in Genially than in other platforms. So if I need that, I'm going to Genially. I also love those guided templates that I showed you. If I want to make a version of that, I know I'm going directly to Genially because for me, it's easier. But it's all about using the tool that is appropriate based on what's in your toolbox. So make sure to like and subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for future installments in this series where I show you what else is in my instructional design toolbox. This is Dr. John Pauls. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, have fun innovating. Bye. <laughs>